Well, howdy friends, it's Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A series. You know, I say it all the time, but we can't thank you enough for being a part of this series. We get hundreds and hundreds of questions each week, via email, of course, and uh, we're getting to them as quickly as we can, so we appreciate your patience. Uh, if you need immediate assistance, remember to pick up the phone and give us a call. And if you would like your question answered here on our YouTube channel, which of course will get you a free hat and a fly box, please send them over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. We really can't get to them on social media. We're not very technical. Uh, excuse me, one second. Yes? Yes? Um, no thanks. Uh, send it via email, please. Yeah, email. Okay. Thanks, bye. As I was saying, uh, we're not very technologically advanced around here. Uh, I really don't know what my way around social media or comments or things like that. So old fashioned, call us on the phone or send us an email and we will respond to your questions. Um, even the silly ones. So <clears throat> first of all, today we've got three questions today. They all kind of tie in. I'm going to try to answer them as best I can here in the studio, but we're probably going to have to step outside and grab the whiteboard. But uh, uh, first of all, we have Stuart Durant uh, from Medina, New York. And Stuart says, hello, my name is Stuart. I live in western New York and I've just decided this spring to get into fly fishing. A friend of mine recommended your How to Begin Fly Fishing series and I watched them all and I thought they were great. Well, thank you, Stuart. I was wondering if you can do a video or a talk about what to do when you get a strike. I find myself missing lots of fish because I'm unable to set the hook. I'm not sure if it's me doing something wrong or maybe I'm missing something. Thank you in advance for your input and advice. Well, uh, Stuart, uh, I'm going to have several things, but I think, uh, first of all, if you are missing strikes, uh, yes, you're doing something wrong. And I would say the first bit of advice for you, and again, there's more to come, is that you must, and every single person, uh, as soon as your fly hits the water, you must put the line under your index finger. I'm guessing that you're not doing that, okay? I'm guessing you're making your cast, making your delivery, and you've got your line like this. And yes, when you go to set a hook, you, ha you don't have that reference point to set the hook, to tighten up quickly, okay? This is one of the single most important things I can stress when it comes to fishing, that as soon as that fly hits the water, you have got to put the line right under your index finger, and that's the reference point on which you're gonna set the hook. I think we're gonna say that again in some of these other questions, okay? But stay tuned, I think some of the other questions will help you out as well, uh, but my guess is uh, that's the big problem is you don't have that line under your index finger and you don't have proper control therefore. Second question is from Devin Allen from Stockport, Ohio. Um, Devin says, hey, I love you guys' educational videos and Q&A and I'm a big fan of them. I started fly fishing around the beginning of summer. Hold on, uh, Devin, there's no periods in here. Um, which makes it hard for an old guy like me to read, but let me try to make sense of this or it's gonna sound funny. Um, it seems like I'll hook a fish a lot of the times and halfway it jumps off. I was wondering when you hook up on a fish, what's the best angle to set the hook and reel a fish in? Okay, I think I got it. So you're asking about the angle. Um, really, really big question, and it's really uh, simple, and it is about angles. In fact, virtually everything we do is about angles. That's why it's called angling, okay? And remember that a hook is shaped like this, okay? And so, therefore, when you go to set a hook, you almost always want to be below 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock on a clock face. I'll show you this outside, but if you go up like this, which so many people do, it looks good on TV and it looks good in advertisements, but when you go to set a hook up like this, between 10 and two on a clock face, remember that you're pulling the hook like this and pretty good chance you're gonna pull that fly out of the fish's mouth. Whereas if you set a hook down and to the side, 
again below 10 or 2, you're pulling that hook this direction, much better chance you're going to bury that hook better. Same thing when you're fighting the fish. Try to keep side pressure as much as possible. Again, I see so many people fighting a fish up here, and there's just so much wrong with that. Again, let's, let's go outside, and I'll show you some of this with the fly rod. So I would say for you, uh, Devin, use periods and set the hook down to a, the side into an angle. That's going to help you out a lot. Um, and next we have Joseph Rogers from Rexburg, Idaho. And my name is Joe Rogers. I'm new to fly fishing and your content has been a great source resource for me and helping me to feel more confident while I'm trying to learn how to fly fish. Thank you. Well, uh, Joe, you're very welcome. My question is about hook setting. Is there a proper way to set the hook on a fly? And does this technique change when using different flies? Again, let's go outside. Um, but yes, Joe, it can change when using different flies. For example, if you're dry fly fishing or nymph fishing, your rod might be kind of up, okay, where you're trying to control the slack and get a dead drift. And therefore, it might be a slightly different hook set than, say, if you're contact fly fishing with a streamer or a bass bug or a bonefish fly. So, again, let's go out in the field real quick and take a look at a little bit uh, at this. And I'll talk a little bit more about the different ways that you would set a hook based on the different techniques. All right, Joe, Stuart, and Devin. Number one is that after every cast that you deliver to the water, you've got to put the line under your index finger. This is the crux of your control system. Not only helps you control the line leader and the fly when it's on the water, but it's the only way you're gonna be able to effectively set a hook, okay? If you do not have the line under your index finger, you're inevitably gonna have slack right here, and then you go to set the hook and you're not nearly gonna be as effective. Okay, so line under the index finger and you try to keep as tight a line as you can. Um, uh, of course, that's going to vary on the technique that you're using, but that line under the index finger is the crux of your control system. The next thing that we talked about is that uh, almost everybody, especially when they're getting started in fly fishing, they go to set a hook and they go up with the rod like this. Okay, now first of all, having the rod up like that is putting the fight or the bend right in the tip and the fish doesn't even hardly know that you're there okay number two remember that a hook is shaped like this okay and if you're pulling up you're pulling that hook that way and a lot of times it's going to come right out of the mouth you're going to miss hook sets and uh, and then fighting a fish same deal you're pulling the hook that direction very likely that hook's going to pull out so when you go to set a hook Try your best to set the hook down low, okay? Below that 10 o'clock or two o'clock position as best you can. I know there's gonna be times when you have to come up here to avoid obstructions or keep the water away from sticks or stuff, but as soon as you can, bring that fight back down here. That keeps the hook pulling more parallel better chance of it staying in his jaw and you're also using the butt of the rod to fight the fish which is what it was designed for the tip of the rod is for casting the butt of the rod is for leverage against the fish you're much better off with the rod down to the side now with different types of techniques i think we asked about that if you're dry fly or nymph fishing you're more likely to have the rod up trying to control the slack so you can get a dead drift, of course. And you're gonna do your best to set the hook, just bring it, just sweep the rod down as best you can, okay? When you're streamer fishing, of course you're going to be tight to the fly, contact fly fishing, and you're just gonna tighten up in conjunction with what we call a strip set, where you're also pulling the line as well. So you're pulling on the line and bending the rod, again, low. But I would say most of all, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, is no matter what you're doing, no matter what the technique, you've always got to set the hook in a downstream fashion. If you're fishing in a river, you have always got to set the hook in the direction that the current is flowing, okay? Again, think about this. If you set the hook upstream, you're just pulling that fly away from the fish. I call that technique, get away from my fly. Okay, 
<clears throat> the current's flowing this direction. You have got to set the hook this direction. Again, think about the physics of it, the angles of it. That's what this is all about, okay? So line under the index finger, keep it below 10 and two when you're setting a hook and when you're fighting a fish as much as possible and make sure that you have to set the hook in a downstream motion. Okay, so thanks as always. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll get you out free hats and free fly boxes. Be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you and subscribe. It's free so you don't miss an episode. We'll see you real soon. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.